Look at those guys, ravenous. Hello, hello. Today I've got a bit of a mission on my hands, so I want to rehouse these stinky little guys, which are my assassin bugs. They've only recently been moved into this enclosure to give them some more verticality and space to be able to hang and molt. But they're growing so quick that I'm going to have to put them in something bigger, I think, because they're a little bit cramped up in there. And what I don't want to happen is, whilst they might be all right in that size enclosure, if they start having babies or something, there's just not going to be enough room in there. So I want to get them in something a bit more permanent. And it'll also give us a chance to just have a bit of a deeper look at them because they're so cool. One of them's recently got to maturity now, so he's fully grown and it looks awesome. They're such an impressive species. I just hope he doesn't fly or anything. Uh, I'm a bit wary. So let's get the enclosure set up. It's kind of bare at the moment. And then we can try and move them out, hopefully without any incidents. So this is what they're housed in at the moment. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of room in there. There's eight assassin bugs in there presently. And they do struggle a bit to move around without stepping on each other's toes, so to speak. They get a little bit feisty when you put food in there, which I'll demonstrate once we've got them all rehoused. And the big daddy keeps moving away every time I put the light on him, but we'll get a good look at him once we move these out of here. So here's the enclosure as it stands at the moment. I've created this custom enclosure just to kind of fit with what they need. I've made this back out of expanding foam and then stuck substrate to it. And that's also allowed me to, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's some really good uh, ledges here for them to kind of hang from or sit on top of if they do need to molt. What my plan is, I wanted to have a bit of a mixture of substrate, but I do want somewhere for them to have the opportunity to lay their eggs if they want it. So I'm going to have some sand in here and then have a corner where there is some dirt uh, for them to lay any potential young in if they desire. I'm going to put some clay balls in the bottom just to fill out the area so I don't have to use as much sand. All right, I hope this looks okay because this sand is quite white. I did want to have it as sort of a beach theme, um, but I'm not sure if that'll work. We'll see. I don't know if there's enough space to kind of scape that out in here. Well, let's make a start and see. We can always we can always put a uh, cocoa fiber over the top or something if I don't like the look of this. And now we can add some dirt. We've also popped some sphagnum moss there at the front right, just so they have got an option of hydration. It's going to be a fairly dry enclosure, but I still want a little uh, hydration station for them to have the option of drinking from if they want to. And these guys do like to kind of hide themselves away from time to time. So I want to give them plenty of little hiding spots they can utilize if they want it. Thing is, a lot of the wood that I want to put in here is in with them at the moment. So I think I'm going to have to get that out first. Yeah, do you know what? Let's do that. Let's get them out and get them in a temporary enclosure. So then I can move some of their decor into this one. So I'm thinking the best way to do this is to try and navigate them into this temporary enclosure and then move them from there into the big one. As I've mentioned before, these guys have a really vicious bite. I don't know if you call it a bite or a sting, but their little proboscis that they have on the end of their nose can spike you. That's how they incapacitate their prey. And from what I've read, it's really, really horrible if you get if you get bitten by one of these bad boys. So I'm hoping to avoid that. And also another thing I've read is that when they become adults, they can unleash a death fart on you and just blast you with some horrible stink. Not not witnessed it myself, but I have been told that you will know if they do it because it stinks really bad. So none of that, please, guys. I'm going to trust you. They just look sneaky, don't they? So how are we going to do this, boys and girls? If I can get them in here, we can then get a, get a really nice look at them too. Mm. 
Right, how are we gonna get you in? Oh, another one's molted. I've just noticed there's two adults now. That's cool. So that's an adult, he's got his wings. Not sure how to sex these, I might have to have a look at that. All right, they seem a bit more receptive to the uh, paintbrush than they did to the tweezers, so. If these guys didn't potentially bite, I'd have no problem holding these. They're all right. They're all right. It's just the bite I'm worried about. All right, we got them. There they are, in all their glory. And there we can see the big adult. He's the biggest one we've got. I just love how shiny and pristine they look. Jet black, shiny shells. Okay, that's the hard part I've with. I've got all the driftwood out, tentatively, and now we can scape how it's all gonna look. Do you know what? The more I'm thinking about this, the more I think I'm gonna scrap the sand, which is really annoying, because I've just put it all in there. I just don't know if it's gonna work. I like the idea of a beachy enclosure, but there's not enough space to really make it worthwhile in this one. I think I'm gonna drop the idea and just go with cocoa fiber. There we go, we'll go with the standard mix. My thoughts were if I had a sandy enclosure and I didn't give them much medium to lay their eggs in, then I wouldn't get an explosion of assassin bugs in population because I think they're a bit notorious for reproducing. Get some of my favorite in here, the twisted hazel, just for some vertical elements too. That should do the trick. I'm a little bit annoyed because I, I haven't got any other driftwood that I can use. I'd have liked, maybe liked to have something a bit bigger in here for them to hide behind. Do you know what? I'm overthinking it. That'll be fine. That's good. That works for them. They've got hiding places. They've got crevices. They've got hanging spots. They've got verticality. It'll do. All right, let's move it out of the way and then get some shots of these guys whilst we've got them in plain sight. You can really see that proboscis there, tucked underneath his chin. You would not want to get bitten by that. It's awesome how well armoured they are. There's jet black spikes. Their vivid coloration. Obviously a clear signal to people that they're not to be messed with. And this specific species is Cytala horrida, which is the king spiny assassin bug, the largest of the assassin bugs that you can get in the hobby. This one's slightly younger. He's got a little bit of a more red coloration, no wings yet. When they're nymphs and well, when they're young, they're a lot more red. They've got the orange legs and their abdomens are a lot brighter. And then as they mature, they tend to darken up until they reach adulthood. And that's when they get these really impressive wings with the orange spots on. Thankfully, they don't really tend to fly. I'm sure they could if they wanted to. I've certainly never heard them buzzing around and as you can see when I just moved them they're they're not really ones for taking flight even when they're given the opportunity. Just another example here, good shot of this guy in his rostrum or his proboscis. And you can kind of see the little wing buds on top of his abdomen there. 
That means that in the next molt, he should be an adult. And those rostrums, they don't spike you with that. What they actually do is they have, if you imagine how a butterfly looks with its proboscis kind of curled up underneath it, it has something very similar in a tube inside the rostrum. And it will almost shoot it out like a little spike. And it's uh, what it penetrates its prey with and then will suck the juices out just like a straw. So delightful little guys, aren't they? All right, the boys are in. They're settled. They've had a chance to acclimatize themselves a little. Now let's try giving them some roachy roaches. And you might see what I mean by the way they react. Oh, they're already getting a bit feisty. Calm down, boys. Maybe they know what's coming. So I'm sorry, Mr. Roach, but thank you for your sacrifice. And you'll probably see they'll be keen to grab onto this guy, as long as he's not too big for them. There we go. And there's the little scuffle that I like to have. Calm it down, there's plenty to go around. Let's get another one in there. See if the big boy at the back wants it. Really ruining my lovely decor. Goodness sake, look at them. Absolutely, <laughs> that guy's on his head. Calm yourselves down, Jesus. Four of them on that one, poor roach. At least it'll die quickly. Let's get some smaller ones in there. They just bundle on top of it. It's weird that they never, they never bite themselves, or each other, sorry. They just scramble around trying to steal it from each other. Here you go, here's a smaller one. And these guys will scavenge too. So the ones that maybe aren't actively taking down a prey item, they will scavenge um, any corpses that are laying around. Just look at those guys, ravenous. I mean, if their bite is as potent as people report it to be, you can see how these guys could take down something quite a bit bigger than itself if there was a group of them. I mean, one can easily take a dubia roach out. So, you know, if you were a little mouse or something walking along and had a group of these jump on you, it's probably going to be a bit of a bad day. You can see one of the larger guys has got a cricket all to himself. Cricket, a roach all to himself up there too. The guy at the back's got that one all to himself. Let's see if we can move him out into the open a little. Come on, you can share that one. Jesus, you don't need all that. Oh, there we go. They are a bit messy, these guys. That's the only downside, because they will just leave their prey once they're done with it to go mouldy in the enclosure, so you do have to be on top of the spot cleaning. But yeah, the feeding frenzy is always hilarious. I don't know why they're all bundling on that one roach when there's a few in there. Amazing though. Fascinating guys to watch these. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the focus on these assassin bugs, the Cytala Horida. If you enjoy this kind of content, I usually post videos at least once a week, so consider subscribing. But until then, stay safe and I'll see you on the next one.